Welcome to Shock to the Series. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another episode of Shock to the Series. And this is, of course, the second week of One Shot Month. So we are going to be looking at Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, the Fighting Edition from Super Nintendo. Uh, this game, of course, way back when Power Rangers first started uh, being something in America, uh, this came out. Uh, right around the time of the of the movie, actually, um, to help promote that. Um, it's a little hard to see. This copy is really old. I think I picked it up from Second Charles a while ago. Tried to keep it in as good shape as I could, but you can see there's the Thunder Megazord punching Lord Zed on the front cover. This is another one that's K to A, uh, so it's one of the weird ratings. But um, Thunder Megazord punching Lord Zed, and there was, I believe, four villains, three villains. Four villains, four villains, and four Zords, and a special uh, unlockable character. This was back in the days when you could put in passwords and things, and put in code button presses and get characters. Uh, and that was more common of a thing. Um, so you had the Thunder Megazord, the White Tiger Zord, or Mega Tiger Zord, excuse me, uh, the Ninja Megazord, and the Shogun Zord, Shogun Megazord. And then you had, I believe, Silverhorn, Lip Sinker. And then Goldar and Lord Zed. And the unlockable character was Ivan Ooze, the villain from the movie. Uh, I always loved Ivan Ooze as far as, like, one of those villains who, like, I know the movie wasn't great. I know it was better than Turbo, but I know the movie wasn't great. But I loved Ivan Ooze. You know, he was, he's, he felt like a bigger deal, um, you know, when he merged with his, with his own little Zord things. You know, again, watching some things back later, it's, it's not as great as I would have liked it, as I would like it to be. Uh, but I think it is well and truly done. Um, you know, my hope is that Ivan Ooze doesn't just kind of get lost to the annals of Power Rangers history, being an American-created villain. Um, my hope is that maybe he shows up <laughs> as a more serious threat, maybe in a sequel to a 2017 movie, maybe? Or maybe we get some... I don't know. I don't know if you can improve on Zed. I, I don't know that you improved much on Rita or Goldar, to be fair, in the 2017 movie. Because I love, I love Goldar! Rita! <laughs> uh, from the original show. But um, but the thing is, this game is really interesting. Um, it has a different mechanic than, I think, any other fighting game I've ever seen or played. Uh, where you've got a bar constantly filling at the bottom. And if you happen to time what essentially amounts to your super, you have various special moves. But if you happen to time one of those moves exactly right, basically as the bar gets completely full, uh, you pull off A, a more powerful version of the move, and B, you allow your bar to change color. And it goes from, I want to say like blue to green to pink to yellow. I think it's three or four colors. And then eventually if you do it enough, and you can do it whenever you can, basically, basically if your move connects or you actually, it doesn't even have to connect. If you time it right and power it up, even if they block, your bar will change color. Um, and eventually it'll change to a point where instead of just a fairly solid color, um, it's lightning across the bar. And at that point, if you do the move again, I th it might require a little more input. But if you basically do the move again, you get your ultimate super, basically. Um, you get your finisher, essentially. And it can be blocked, unfortunately. Uh, so, I mean, it's, it's still blockable. It's not something where they just have to take it. Um, but it, it is still very damaging. Uh, there is, I'm fairly certain there's chip damage in this, um, and it still does a fair bit of chip damage, and if it, if it goes on block, they're in serious trouble. Um, and it's, it's also really just a simple setup. You, for the story mode, of course, versus you can pick anybody you want, for the story mode, you pick either the Thunder Megazord or the Mega Tiger Zord. Um... And you go into battle. And initially, you train against the other Megazords and you fight the bad guys. So for the matches against the Megazords, you're in a giant Zordon command center training room, essentially. Which is really cool. It's still a, you know, a fight. It's not just practicing your moves on them and doing stuff like that. But it feels more like, okay, this is a sparring session. This is a training thing. This isn't, you know, that big a deal. And then for the monsters, you actually are out in the world fighting the monsters. Um... And eventually, you do get to fight yourself, your, your the you know second color of you, 
And that's a really hard fight. That's basically the fight before the last couple of villain fights. And so that's really kind of your big test uh, because Zed can be pretty difficult. And you, if you do right, you do face Ivan Ooze. And Ooze is difficult. To, Ooze is difficult if you let him be difficult. But he's also very susceptible to just uppercut, uppercut, uppercut over and over again. Um it's not the best AI, um, but this is one of those games where if you look at the fighting game climate today, all the innovations that have been made through games like Dragon Ball Fighters, uh, Injustice, we know we got Mortal Kombat 11 coming, which I need to do a video on. I'll probably do that after the community uh, gameplay reveal thing. Um, but Street Fighter 5 as well, and you have all the history to pull from. I mean, even if you just take Megazords and bad guys, we've got everything basically after Shogun that hasn't been in existence in a fighter. Really. I mean, they've had other Power Ranger games, but nothing in the fighting game since. They've had, like, run around, slash em ups, and uh, they had the, uh, the E game, the little uh, Mighty Morphin game that was released like last year, two years ago. Um, that was all right, but it could have been a lot better. And there's the mobile fighting game now that um, that's pretty good, but it is still a mobile game. So I'm looking at, you know, this console idea. And again, you can pick from all the Zords from Zeo and Mad and um, Turbo and Lost in Space and Lightspeed Rescue and Time Force and Mystic Force and everything up until the current Nickelodeon stuff like uh, Samurai and Ninja Steel and Super Ninja Steel and then even again the bad guys have stuff we have um, uh, what's her name Ninja Steel villainous uh, we the sh the series just finished my mind shouldn't be this blank. Um, <laughs> Um, whatever her name is, then just doing she had the Foxatron, and this is a giant fox robot. Um, I am blanking and I'm mad at myself, <laughs> but yeah, um, you did have bad Megazords, and you can even have the bad guys grow to big size. They do that literally every episode, practically. You know, that's that's kind of the whole thing, is that's why they have to have the Megazords in the first place. So, um, yeah, I think that, and it with, and if you put the mechanic back, you can refine it a little. Um, but it's something so different where timing matters and things like that. And you say, well, supers aren't really a big thing in fighting games anyway. I want them to be. That's one thing that's always bugged me is the fact that I think, I think sometimes supers and ultimates and things like that are kind of pushed to the wayside a little bit because. One, I know com I know one is reason is because of combo scaling. Um, because you get an opponent in a big combo, and then you try to finish them with the ultimate, and instead of doing this much damage, it does this much damage, you know, because of the combo scaling. So that's one reason, and I do understand it. But it is frustrating because it kind of becomes what's the point. And now, admittedly, it is a big shot, and if you can manage to catch an opponent coming in with it, then it's usually a good thing if you haven't been comboing before um but i really feel like uh ignore the flashing lights by the way i'm uh updating my playstation that i finally got back uh, i'm getting it all in working order again but yeah i think mighty morphin power rangers the fighting edition is well past due for some kind of sequel some new take on a Power Rangers fighter. I was really hopeful personally that we'd get like the White Ranger in, or something in Injustice 2 as DLC when we end up getting the Ninja Turtles instead, which I'm fine with to a point, but at the same time, it would have been really nice to see uh, the Rangers. I think they would fit with the Injustice 2 scheme very well, but giving them their own new fighting game would be just as good, if not better. That's it for this one, guys. Uh, do you want to see a Mighty Morphin Power Rangers Fighting Edition 2? Or should we just stick to having them on the airwaves? Post your opinion in the top right. And next week, we are going to take a look at... I actually forget. Give me a moment. <laughs> I should have looked at this beforehand. I think I know, but I want to check to be sure, because that could be in two weeks. <sighs> it's been one of those days. <sighs>
Nope. All right. That's what's coming here. Okay. So two weeks is that. So next week, I am going to take a look. I'm a huge fan of wrestling. I do. I have a page dedicated to posting Raw and SmackDown results when I can watch it. Um, and I tried to do pay-per-view predictions. I'm in online wrestling seasons. And there was a game released several years ago in the Xbox 360 PS3 era that took wrestling and it took normal wrestling physics and threw it out the window. And it was absolutely fantastic. That's it for this one, guys. I was as lights out on Shock to the Series, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, the Fighting Edition.